day of campaigning, a reward to Fiona Scott for backing you in the leadership contest and what uh, can you do to counter the Tony Abbott loyalists who consider her a traitor? Well, let me just say this to you. Fiona Scott, as I just said, is, a, is an outstanding representative for Lindsay, an outstanding representative of this community. This, this, this is her home. She, was she grew up here. She lives here. She was educated. The University of Western Sydney where she did a business degree and then as I said she went on to get an MBA at the top business school in Australia at the AGSM uh, in, uh, in, in Sydney. So uh, she's, I'm, I'm here with Fiona, she is a formidable member of our team. Fiona, talk about what you're doing to represent Penrith again because, and, and Lindsay because uh, this is uh, the, the, the intellect you bring to bear, the experience you bring to bear and the passionate advocacy is so important as, as we've built our national economic plan. Uh, well, the Prime Minister did actually quite explain it with the journalist earlier, so... Could you tell us which way you voted in September? Because it seems to be an issue for Mr Abbott's supporters in this seat that you became a traitor by voting for Mr Turnbull. Can you clarify here in front of us all which way you voted? Because I don't think you have on the record uh, before now. I take my role as a parliamentarian very, very seriously. In that, uh, the solidarity of the party room is absolutely crucial. I don't leak from the party room. I don't intend to start leaking from the party room. I have never disclosed how I, how I voted, and uh, frankly, I never will, because I think it's important for members of parliament to be able to take the trust of their communities. And the trust of their community is taking your vows and your oaths very seriously. Uh, people who do choose to do those things, that's a matter for them. But for me, I hold my own moral code and I hold myself to those regards. And, and I'm not going to uh, break what I think is a very important oath to both the party well, and can I, can I, can I, can I just, can I just say, can I just say, can I just say, uh, Fiona, yes, good on you, Fiona. Someone's just said, you're right. That's the, that is, Fiona's spoken courageously there and frankly. Let me just say to you, it's uh, those party room ballots are secret ballots and they're secret for a reason. Uh, and so that people can confidentially make a choice. Uh, some people say how they vote, whether they're saying, whether they're telling the truth, who knows? Uh, the, the, most, the, the position of greatest integrity with a secret ballot, whether it's in a party room uh, or whether it is in, the, uh, in, in an election, is uh, for people to cast their vote, uh, uh, you know, in the priv in privately and confidentially. That's how the system's set up. So what, what you've said has, uh, has, has, is consistent with that and has the highest integrity. So, sorry. The seat of Lindsay has been, has been won by the party that formed government since 1984. How important is the seat for you to, to, for your fortunes? Are you worried about it and is it a must win seat? This, this seat is important for Australia's fortunes. This seat, holding this seat, Fiona holding this seat as the member for Lindsay is absolutely critical for the future of Australia. It's critical because if we hold this seat, then we will be returned to government and then we will be able to carry out our national economic plan. Our national economic plan sets out a range of measures, and you know what they are. Innovation, investing in our advanced manufacturing through our big defence programs, re-equipping our armed forces so that we do so in a way that we support jobs and growth and technology here. Opening up the big export markets that are in Asia, as we have done, and opening up more. Singapore opened further only a week ago, and you've seen what we're doing with enterprise tax uh, reform, making super fairer, giving businesses, the businesses that these women run, giving them the incentive to do more, to invest more, and to employ more. And of course, we're bringing the budget back into balance, living within our means, everything we are promising whether it is in education or in health or in infrastructure, and the $3.6 billion of Western Sydney infrastructure that you mentioned a, a second ago, all of that is fully paid for. Our opponents have $62 billion of promises over the next four years for which they have not identified a source of funds. So what's that going to be? More taxes? Think of the chaos that Labor is, is, is foreshadowing. Think about it. We have from Chris Bowen, the shadow treasurer yesterday at the press club saying that after a hundred days of winning office he will bring down a mini budget 
so we won't know for 100 days after Labor wins the election, were they to do so, we would, won't know what the new taxes will be. And you know what that is? That he will say, he would, if they won office, they would come in after 100 days, they'd say, oh dear, things aren't quite as we expected. We're going to have to jack up taxes even more than we told you. You can imagine that. And then on the other hand, we have the prospect of a coalition with the Greens. Well, Mr Shorten says he won't enter into a deal with the Greens. Just remember what Nick McKim said, the Tasmanian Green, uh, he, uh, who formed a formal coalition with Labor in the Tasmanian uh, government. And he said, uh, he said yesterday, oh yes, the Labor Party always say that before the election. They said that in Tasmania too. But a few weeks after the election, there I was sitting around the cabinet table. So we know what Labor will do. If they, if they need to do a deal with the Greens, they will do it. Or of course, you could have um, Tony Burke's other uh, multiple recipes for chaos from Labor saying, oh, well, we'll just go straight back to an election if we don't like the result. Really, the only way we can be sure of delivering the jobs and growth that Australia needs, the stability and the leadership that Australia deserves, is to return my government on the 2nd of July so that we deliver our national economic plan, every single lever of which, whether it is youth employment, whether it is giving women a better deal on super, whether it is providing incentives to small and, business, small and medium businesses, or whether it is innovation. Every single element of what we are proposing is going to deliver jobs and growth. And that's what we need. The opportunities have never been greater. They've never been greater. But there are uncertainties. Strong leadership, a clear vision, a clear plan. That's what we have. And that's what will deliver us the success that our children and our grandchildren deserve in these exciting times. Thank you all very much. Thank you. OK, so that was live from Emu Plains in Western Sydney, the PM in the seat there of Lindsay. Our political editor Chris Yulman joins us now. So Chris